In terms of angle of sun, it's worthwhile noting, right? If you're um, greater than 35 degrees, um, you basically, the zenith angle is too oblique. And as a result, it is uh, all the vitamin D producing rays are absorbed by the ozone layer. So for example, you know, we're taught to go out in the early morning or late afternoon, get your vitamin D and not to worry about skin damage. It's the worst time to go out because you're getting blasted by UVA radiation. You don't begin making vitamin D in your skin till about nine, 10 o'clock in the morning. And it ends at around three to four o'clock in the afternoon. And that's even if you live in Panama. And it's because of the zenith angle of the sun. So the precursor of 70 hydrocholesterol, right, means that you really, there's not really a nutrient that you would ingest that you could improve it. That does not happen. The one question, though, that did come up was, what about if you're on a statin where it, it prevents you from making cholesterol? And it turns out that all of your cells make cholesterol because it's important as a component of your cell membrane, and that includes your epidermis. And the statin doesn't get to the bloodless tissue of your epidermis and has no impact on vitamin D production. So when the sun is used to make vitamin D, there's other photochemicals and other precursor, well, well, precursor metabolites that get created. Is it better to do it from the sun than through a supplement? Is there any difference? A good question. And we don't know the answer to that question yet. We've been doing research in this area for a long time. And Dr. Slominski has done the same. He, he's found a whole host of additional metabolites that potentially have some effect. There's some evidence that maybe one of them may be helping to decrease the development of melanoma or squamous cell carcinoma as a result of being exposed to UVB radiation. We just wrote up a review on this uh, published in Nutrients that just came out, uh, giving a whole host of different mechanisms involved. And to answer your question about how much vitamin D you make, so we did a study in healthy adults and showed that if you have your whole body in a bathing suit exposed to one minimal erythemal dose, so a slight pinkness to your skin 24 hours later, so not a sunburn, it's equivalent to ingesting 15,000 to 20,000 units of vitamin D. We also know the other answer to the question is, does it last longer in your body if you take it orally versus in sunlight? And if you take just a single dose of vitamin D, it rapidly increases and decreases within 72 hours. However, if you are exposed to sunlight, it actually goes up and maximizes it around 24 hours and is sustained for at least several days. So the vitamin D that you make in your skin lasts two to three times longer um, in your body. If you want to know how do I know when to go out, can sunlight make vitamin D, is we developed an app called dminder.info. So D-M-I-N-D-E-R dot I-N-F-O. Uh, and it was developed with a group out in California, Antometrics. Uh, and it will tell you anywhere, basically on this planet, when you can make vitamin D, how much vitamin D you make. And it warns you to get out of the sun so you don't get a sunburn. And it's good for your Android and for your iPhone. And it's free. If making vitamin D in the skin may be better, it depends, it seems to hang around a bit longer. Would having like a UV light at home, to make your own vitamin D be preferable to taking a supplement? So we don't know the answer to that question yet, but there's a lot of, of patients, say, that, malabs that can't absorb vitamin D that will benefit from UV exposure. Uh, in the United States, uh, there's what's called the Spurdy lamp that was developed by Dr. Spurdy back in the 1940s, where you would a, a family uh, would go to a local pharmacy and buy this lamp and then expose their child to it uh, in order to prevent them from getting rickets. And so there's a lot of companies now beginning to think um, of using LEDs because we demonstrated that uh, LEDs, which have very good uh, wavelengths um, that are very narrow of UVB, uh, is very efficient in making pre-vitamin D in your skin. Okay, so thinking about supplements, right? If we were... We are often actually 
recommended to take supplement. V- vitamin D is a supplement as most people are deficient and especially in the Northern hemisphere in winter. Do you have any advice on how much to take and, and what form is best? Does it matter if it's a capsule or a pill or, or an oil? I'll give you two parts to, to the question. The first is that because the xenothangal is, is much more oblique in the wintertime, so, for example, in Boston, you basically cannot make any vitamin D in your skin from exposure to sunlight from about November until the end of March. And if you live in the UK, for example, almost six months of the year, if you go out and expose to sunlight, you won't make any vitamin D. In terms of supplements, uh, we've done the studies and we showed that whether it be in an oil or a capsule, or a liquid, for the most part, the vitamin D is bioavailable. And the reason is that when you ingest vitamin D, it's fat soluble. And so it has to get incorporated into my cells, into your chylomicrons, which then gets incorporated into your lymphatic system, which then goes all the way up into your superior vena cava, gets dumped in, and then ultimately gets to the liver to get converted to 25-hydroxy vitamin D. So how much? And so the Endocrine Society in 2011 recommended that infants require at least 400 up to 1,000 units of vitamin D a day is safe. For children, 600 to 1,000 units. And I think teenagers should be treated like adults. And we had recommended 1,500 to 2,000 units a day. Furthermore, if you're obese, you need two to three times more. And why is everybody vitamin D deficient? right? We estimate 40% of the world's population is vitamin D deficient. It's because you essentially have no vitamin D in your diet, right? It's oily fish like salmon, mackerel, herring, and often have to be wild caught. Mushrooms exposes sunlight. Some foods like in the United States, milk and yogurt, uh, cereals are fortified with vitamin D and cholera. And that's it. Mother nature had designed us early in evolution, to get this essential nutrient, right, is to be making it in your skin. Our hunter-gatherers all the time outside were making plenty of vitamin D. You may want to know how much were our hunter-gatherers typically making and what is the evidence for it? And I think that what gives us a good insight is that Maasai herders and the Hazda uh, were evaluated and they showed that their circulating concentrations of 25-hydroxy vitamin D were around 40 up to 60 nanograms per ml. So we're talking about 100 to 150 nanomoles per liter. To get there, you would need to be ingesting a minimum of about 4,000 international units of vitamin D a day. And those numbers, I, I'm more familiar with the millimoles per liter. So so the 100 to 150 would be a good target to aim for. And the Endocrine Society in 2011 that I chaired that committee, we recommended the target minimum should be 30 nanograms or 75 nanomoles per liter. And 40 nanograms or 100 nanomoles per liter and up to 100 and 50 nanomoles per liter or 60 nanograms per ml is ideal, but up to 250 nanomoles per liter or 100 nanograms per ml, we consider to be the upper limit of being safe. We further showed, based on the literature, that you really have to have a blood level of at least 375 nanomoles per liter or 150 nanograms per ml to even be concerned about vitamin D toxicity. 